edition of The Take. I'm your host, always, Kenny Dixie. Here. Glad you can join us here on The Take on this Thursday, January 7, 2021. Happy New Year, the first take of the new year. What a bang, we kick it off. First things first, join the conversation. Use the hashtag Take here on Connect. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is caring. Call a friend, tell a friend. Hit that subscribe button so you won't miss a thing. As the Take is the hub of pop culture, entertainment weeks of the week. So, hey, happy new year. Hopefully, 2020, 2020 was a horrible, eventful year for many of you. Hopefully, 2021 could be optimistic. And some of you might be pessimists, still might be thinking 2021 is still that evil lurk in the sky behind 2020. Let's hope 2021 be a great year for everyone, a full year. And we hope everyone be that way and be safe. So happy new year and all here from us at Connect TV. Thank you all. All right, let's get to the big story. Big story this week is, man, oh man. What a eventful week this has been. We just ring in the new year, and now we're mere, mere weeks away from a new president. But the current president, the named up president, President Donald Trump, is still see. He still is upset. He still believes he still won this race. And he's getting more crazier and obnoxious and more, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, he more zealous than ever before. He done the most unbelievable thing that you never thought would have existed. Well, Trump lost his mind again. Trump, like I said, he wants to tell the Georgia Secretary of State, Brad Rosenberg, a Georgia official, to reverse the decision of the 2020 election that Biden won the Georgia vote. And won those electrical votes. And he wants him to reverse it. And he forced the, 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 the Georgia official, the Georgia Secretary of State, to change it. He had a telephone call with him. And he won't believe what had happened with this. The results in Georgia that determined that he lost Joe Biden. Asking him to find 11,780 votes and saying there's nothing wrong with saying you've recalculated. Tonight, the fallout. And here's our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Donald Trump's campaign swing to Georgia tonight is now overshadowed by what may be the biggest political crisis yet of his presidency. A secretly recorded phone call where he urged Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger to overturn the... Talk about the Georgia Secretary of State stood his ground and told President Trump that, hey, the decision stands. And the president didn't like that one bit. The president was seeding. You can tell the president felt like... The election was robbed from George. He felt like this is not his moment. This is a rigged election. And even it's getting even more crazy. Trump's latest attempt is he's trying to get 20, 20 um, dozen senators to join on his side to overturn the election. So Vice President Mike Pence has to make the roll call that him and Trump lost. But Trump trying to pressure his own vice president to... Um, Go over and go roll <laughs> over Biden's electoral victory. Woo! Ooh, I just, this just gets weird and weird. Even let's hear what the president had to say. I know you pain. I know you hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. We have to have law and order. We have to respect our great people in law and order. We don't want anybody hurt. It's a very tough period of time. There's never been a time like this where such a thing happened, where they could take it away from all of us. While the president said that but his own vice president Pence don't even do the job that he's going to be mad at him. He's going to be an unhappy man. He's going to be leaving office seething, upset, angry at himself and at everyone who cost him the election that he felt like he was going to be robbed during this election. So only time will tell with that with the president. Wow, it just gets 
crazy and crazy. All right. In celebrity news, we just found out two breaking news stories. One is Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are separated. After eight years together and four kids, four or five kids, Kim has announced that she's separated from Kanye West of her marriage. She has not yet finalized a divorce or started the initial plans for the divorce. You could just tell. You could tell with Kim, she was irritated at Kanye. And they was going to do different paths. This this whole thing got started when Kanye was trying to run for president and went rogue and tried to say that Kim and the whole family trying to use him and, 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 and exploit him. And you could tell it was going downhill from there. And I know Kim kind of felt relieved that she don't have to be be with Kanye West forever, but she still them hit man will be in her life due to those kids. So wish them the best. And also, we also found out Dr. Dre, yes, Dr. Dre, he had a suffering brain aneurysm, but he's in stable condition. Prayer warriors right there. Dr. Dre, legendary member of the um, NWA group, rap group, and he done a few solo albums himself with The Chronic and The Chronic 2. So good news for Dr. Dre. So keep those, keep Dr. Dre in our prayers. All right. Also, um, we need to keep in our prayers. TV icon Larry King has been hospitalized in L.A. with COVID-19. Larry King, know that he's been a television titan, television journalist. He was the primetime interview guy that interviewed all the stars, got answered the questions that many people wanted to be asked, and Larry King knew what to say. So our prayers go to Larry King, too. It's Larry King, I mean, Larry King is Larry King, a legendary Journalist, legendary anchor. So, his name Larry King. Also, the world is gushing about Nicki Minaj. Her showing pics of her new baby boy. See right here, ooh, those big fat cheeks. I hope baby boy didn't want to touch him. She shared. Um, she had a baby boy with her husband, Kenny Petty. So Nicki Minaj finally got a kid. So good for her. Also, power star Natari Knox. Um, gets engaged for Christmas. Montari Norton engaged for Christmas. So happy for her. Power star. Now, be a wife. All right. <laughs> Let's go over to talk shows, talk shows this week. Talk shows, talk shows this week. All right. Now, we know we talked about a big story about Donald Trump um, crying over his big, losing his win, not losing the election. He's still bragging about the Jimmy Kimmel took it another deep farther with this. Conspiracy theories. He says he's been hearing things on what he calls Trump media. It was the kind of call that makes you wonder, is he stupid or drunk? And then you remember he doesn't drink. He tried everything. He bragged. He challenged. He threatened. He told the Secretary of State he would come to Georgia and eat all their peaches. Nothing. Neither Raffensperger nor his lawyer, Ryan Germany, bought any of it. They just kept saying, the information you have is not correct, sir. So then Trump hung up and tried to sell his BS someplace else. Hey, we have a guy on the phone. I know, in Florida. Hello. Okay, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. We appreciate the time and the call. Um, so we've spent a lot of time on this, and uh, if we could just go over <laughs> some of the numbers, I think it's pretty clear that we won very substantially, uh, Georgia. And they are removing machinery, uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can, both of which are criminal but funds. I mean, and you so for you, happen, your family, you the kids, well, oh, you guys... you know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find 11,780 <laughs> votes, which is one more that we have, because we won the state. We want to apologize for that. So that went south very quickly. Um, terribly, terribly sorry for that. We will just say um, our apologies. And he got very excited. And at least I can uh, say the, other thing, the excitement dead people, so dead is people infectious. Voted. You see right there, we were came and had to mock the president's tirade about losing the election. Made the president feel like a crybaby. And it made the president feel like he was on QVC. Thank you, shopping. But he's talking about the election. Why shopping? <laughs> It's just weird, just weird. But it just gets crazier, crazier. But it is what it is. 
You know how they go and stuff. So I you know how they be. Um, all right. And on the view, <laughs> the women of the view, and they went ham and they walked back Megan McCain and didn't miss a beat for this. You know that you look amazing, and they want to know how Baby Liberty is doing. Baby Liberty is doing. Well, thank oh. you guys so much. There she is. Yes, I got <laughs> a few pictures. Um, I, you know, motherhood's insane. I was like, after I gave birth, I was like, women do this. This is what women do. We give birth like this. And, you know, being with a newborn baby has been, it's been surprising to me because motherhood, I think, as everyone knows, was not a simple journey for me. And just being with her is like, the way I've heard described taking ecstasy. Uh, it's just amazing. And it's like, I've been in this bubble of love and baby time and she's just perfect. And it's, it feels like having a little piece of my dad back. It's, it's amazing. And I just, Ben and I are so in love and she's so feisty. She's a wild cat. I mean, surprise, surprise. She's my she's daughter, but thank you. Um, and uh, Sunny, I, you know, I've been keeping up with Sunny a lot. We've been texting all the time. She helped me when I had mastitis at two in the morning. And, you know, you've been talking to me all about new motherhood and it's been, it's been wonderful. It's, it's been really fun um, to, to share this journey with Megan. We, we have been talking a lot and texting a lot. Yeah, Megan McCain back on The View. Megan McCain wants to get her point across and stuff. She didn't miss a beat by having the kid. So Megan McCain back on track with you. All right. When we return here on the tape, we'll be back with more. We had the pol the political rundown. We had the radio show put down. We have many more in the gallery. We have the group. All this and more on the tape. Return after this. First thing first, joining that conversation using the hashtag Tate here on Connect. And don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe is care. Tell a friend, call a friend, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing here on the tape. All right. Now, we when we came back during the commercial break, we talked about, um, you know, the political rundown. Well, with the viewers of return. Well, on the political rundown this week, now we know the fact that Mitch McConnell and Nancy. Pelosi, the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, and the House Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell. Well, I know these stimulus checks are coming out. Many people are still crying about on six, from 600, which they're still receiving to 2000, which Mitch McConnell put the kibosh on. If you want to know something about that, um, go to our viral show, the first episode of viral of this year. We talked about the stimulus package. Show me the money. It's available now on content, you know, connect TV on this. This channel. All right. Like I said, Mitch McConnell and Nancy Pelosi were victims of their own selling of their houses being by their respective hate groups. When Mitch McConnell got his saying, people saying, where's my money? And Mitch Nancy Pelosi, they cover it to the point that we don't even know what was on it. So these hate groups are going crazy. They going bananas. Well, the women in the view made their opinions known with this. That's this to do something about it. Take a listen. You should want to have an accurate election, and you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a, you know, that's a criminal, that's a criminal offense. And, and you know, you can't let that happen. That's, that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. All I want to do is this. I just want to find... Uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. Somebody give us a break. <laughs> Listen. Oh, <my> Come <laughs> on. 11,780 <laughs> votes. That's all he says. Fellas, well, that's all I need, he says. The road calls us to move. Of white stick women on the view, making their opinions known on the vandalism 
it's wrong, but I get it. Some people are upset, fangering, and just that. So, you know how they go. People, um, you don't give people what they want, they go crazy and ballistic. So, you gotta, you know, chill your tongue. I'll tell you that right now. Chill your tongue. <laughs> well, on the Rally Show clip down this week, on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Drew Sador, who's new to the show, and her husband, Ralph, talk it out with a marriage counselor and how to get back on track with their marriage with this. Your goals that needs to happen in your relationship. Respect and sex. What's the preferred frequency for I that? I can't even listen to this. I this would say this, uh, minimum, uh, minimum three times a week. Okay. I think that's really, truly very, very conservative. Okay. And what would respect look like for you? Respect would be someone not emasculating me. Oh, Drew tries to treat me like her mom cheated her dad. And that's never going to work with me. How much truth is it that he saw your mom emasculate you? That's not true. I mean, I allow him to be the man that he is. You know, I see who Ralph is. I know he's not my dad. And I've had to let go of those expectations. Okay. What was that? See, you look like you're about to cry. Huh? That wasn't even real. Let's, let's carry on. I mean, you're laughing one minute. I mean, it just looks like you're about to cry, so I mean, I'm okay. You know, sure? I'm good, yes. <laughs> Wow, the husband, this is on demand. You just want respect and sex. Don't know any man want that. <laughs> it's just how it be. Um, I think it's supposed to be more than emotional connection and trying to get to know your person, which that is, but respect and sex. Sex three times a week. Well, that's, that's typical. But, uh, well, I wonder how many couples have sex be seven days a week or five times a week, <laughs> three times a week. Whether it's like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That's seven days out the week. But I do the way it is. <laughs> I was like, meanwhile, after after another relationship on the Real Housewives of Atlanta is put to the test, and Cynthia Bailey and Kenya Moore. Well, Kenya, Cynthia Bailey is coming, preparing for an upcoming wedding to Todd, well, can you kind of feel some type of way about the COVID restrictions and Cynthia trying to invite many people as she can? Just look at this. This is just married to him on that day because that's the day you guys decided. You're saying, unless it's filmed, unless that date produces a big show, you are now saying, I don't want 10, 10, 20. No, that's not true. I don't see how Okay, let's just break the four wall all the way down. Even if I wasn't on a show. But that's not what you're I saying. Feel, but I've seen the camera a million times. But that's not what you're doing. If you have committed to this date, then why are you not committing to it? Because I, in my mind, I wanted this date. You don't have an answer. I do to, have an answer. It's not making sense. Answer. It is making sense. That is very insulting. The show didn't tell me I had to have a big wedding. The show didn't tell me I even had to get married. Hell, the show didn't tell me I had to get divorced. So now go run tail that. Cynthia, you're bringing it up. You're bringing it up. No, no, no. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Listen, I let you talk. I let you talk. Let me finish. What you're dragging all this other baggage. And I got to watch it. You're my friend. Just listen to me and support me. Just shut up and listen and support me. I'm taking and receiving your advice, okay? We have. Kenya has a point, but who has the money? It's Cynthia's day. Cynthia does that. She needs to have a contract written right here like. You invite it, but if you get sick, you can't sue me. Like an NDA, some not 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 NDA, but a um, non non action clause. You can't sue her for nothing. If something goes wrong with you, you know some people are out there looking for uh, a handout, looking for some chicks. So you know how they go. All right, on the Bachelor this week, the Bachelor on ABC, Mac James, the America's first black bachelor on national TV. Well, he makes his approach to kick out his cocktail party. And look how it go. Out of 10, he's the perfect bachelor I've oh, ever seen. Yes. Yeah. I think he's coming now, guys. Oh, man. I've had so long to think about what I'm going to say to you all. 
And um, I'm going to take a different approach. So if everybody could just bow their head really quick, I'm going to pray for everybody. Dear Heavenly Father, you say that you work all things for the good. I feel Amen. like that's why I'm here. And I feel like that's why these women are here, Lord. So bless Amen. this time we have together, Father. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. At any time I'm feeling nervous or I'm just constantly shooting up prayers just to put myself at ease because just as you all are experiencing this for the first time, I'm experiencing this for the first time with y'all. He used this time for all of us to pray, which I thought was very genuine. That just like, rocked me. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm I had a feeling that I was going to be like infatuated with him, but the fact that he opened that up with a prayer and just like struck a nerve for me, I didn't expect to feel like this so soon. He's pretty much everything like I expected him to and more, so. Well, you see right there, Matt James trying to get in the mingle with everybody. Even <laughs> he gives one rose to one impression to a girl named Amber. This. Is Amber loving, chilling her roles? She's under Smith and my Matt. Well, like people thought Matt James initially was gonna go for white women, but we had to watch and see. Matt James has been shown that he's kind of down with his brown, so we had to see with that. Round, round, frown. So you know how they go. You know how they go. Right. All right, well, news is this week. We found out that the Grammy Awards has been pushed on. Yeah, the Grammy Awards. A rep from the show confirmed to arrive. The Grammy Awards was scheduled to be January 31st, but due to what's going on with the COVID, they're going to push it back. So it might be pushed back in February, like normally it would, but we'll have to wait and see how all this comes about during the Grammys and stuff, CBS, Grammy uh, officials and stuff. All right. Yeah, finally, the viral video of the week. The viral video of the week. All right. Now, if you're watching Raw this week, WWE Wrestling, and you saw a segment where, you know, what happened, Angel Garza, Troy Wilson, and um, forgot, Nikki Croft. Well, Angel Garza was trying to do a segment, and Archie won the title. And they dropped Carly B, and Carly B was trying to figure out why WWE references her name. Carly B saw all this stuff. <laughs> and then, all of a sudden, a WWE superstar named Lacey Evans came into the approach and said somebody smack talk to Carly B. And Carly B was smacking talk her back. So, hey, that's the viral video of the week. And a lot of people say, is Carly B angriest, vicious, ready to go to WrestleMania? We have to wait and see how this all going to play out. But we'll see how this is going to go between Carly B and WWE if that does happen. Knowing her, she would do it. I believe she would do it. And she gave out who was her favorite wrestlers. I know Trish and Melina was on there, so that was a big honor. All right. Thank you all for watching this dish on the tape, the first take of the 2021. It sets the tone for 2021. Let's hope the tape continue on going to, you know, win. So I'll be back next week for another edition of the tape. I've been your host, Kendrick Dixon, so long. See you next week for another edition of the tape.